you so much for talking with me today and for sharing. Why don't you first start by introducing yourself? Yeah, so my name is Stephanie um, and I am 20 years old. I am in Canada, Ontario. <laughs> awesome. And we met down here in Mexico on the Academy program. You were a student and I was down here helping to lead that program. And so we haven't seen each other in person in a long time, but thanks for being on here to talk. Yeah, for sure. It's been a really long time. I, it's crazy how time flies. Like it's already been three years almost. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about relationships and self-love and, and sort of what that looks like for young people and specifically just from your experience and just be open to sharing your perspective and kind of where you come from on this topic and yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward to, to talking about it today. So first, sure. first question would be just what does self-love mean to you? Or what does that look like to you in your life? Self-love, that's a good, co- uh, good question and a good topic. So for me, self-love, I think, focuses on yourself, obviously, um, and focusing on your sense of self. Um, I know that for some people, it is hard grasping around the word love because when you think of love it is a strong word and you think like sometimes am I deserving of love like why should I love myself kind of thing and so for me I would say self-love is just giving yourself one day at a time and getting to know yourself Um, because again like it doesn't necessarily mean like love like oh my gosh I'm so great kind of thing but it can also mean like just getting to know yourself and learning to be comfortable in who you are and getting to know, you know, what things make you excited, what things you like to do as hobbies, you know, what things get you excited to want to hang out with other people, you know, explore other countries, things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. That's important. I think that um, self-love is just a form of taking care of yourself. Yeah. It's a, it's, Mm -hmm. you often hear the term self-care and I think that self-care is a form of self-love, right? It's, are you taking care of your own life and your own body and your, your needs usually before other people? That's kind of important. It's true. It's true. And if you don't put yourself first, which I know is hard for some people because it's easier to pour into other people than it is for yourself. But that's one of the challenges I think that you have to push yourself into doing is being able to pour back into yourself because you can only fill other people's buckets so much until you don't have, you have an empty bucket yourself. And yes, other people can fill you up and love on you and encourage you. But at the end of the day, like you're not going to feel full if you don't do that for yourself, I think too. So yeah, for sure. And so I think that we all, you know, can do better at self-love. That's not something that anybody has mastered yet, but so how do you, how can we practice, how can we practice better self-love? I think like some of the ways we could practice better self-love would be like, for me, you know, sometimes it's painting. And even though it's, you know, something little, it's painting gives me that energy to be like, wow, like I'm giving myself the space to be able to create something and it makes me feel good. And so I'm going to keep doing it because it makes me feel good. Or another example could be going for walks. If that gives you the energy to be able to go for a walk, listen to some music and it makes you feel better just to go for a walk. I feel like that's a good idea. I know for some people it's with hanging out with family and friends, you know, some people are very extroverted. And so um, the way they feel loved is being around other people. Um, I definitely know I can relate to that. I like being around other people and I definitely feel um, the mood is a lot heightened and a lot lighter and you feel good. Um, but I think definitely some of the ways would just be taking, um, focus on today because you're only in control of today. Um, and I find that we get caught up in anxieties and worries about tomorrow and thinking like, well, what can I do tomorrow? Because that will make me feel better when you could focus on today. And if that just means taking a shower, going for a walk, writing in your journal, um, eating something of your favorite food, I find that that can be super beneficial Um, one of the tasks and things that I taught myself too, is even just writing notes, you know, they could be like, you are love, something small like that. And just placing it somewhere where you would need to see it or, you know, writing in your mirror saying like, you are beautiful. This is today. You know what I mean? Just things that, uh, encourage you to just focus on today because we're only in control of today. Tomorrow is a never promised. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I love that. The words of encouragement and mm-hmm. kind of what you talked about, it's, it seems like finding moments of stillness and moments of yeah. calm amongst just, your yeah. busy life. 
Yes, because we can get so caught up in the everyday and, well, what's next? And, oh, well, I got to do this. Or, oh, I haven't done this. And, you know, I have to do this. And if you just stop and just, like, realize that you're only in control of what you can do, if you focus on the forward, you're never going to be in the present. And that's where I think it's most important because, you know, two years, like we said, can fly by and you could have nothing to show for it. Where in those two years, if you focus on yourself, you could have so much self-growth and say you know I was scared to take the bus a year ago but now I've pushed myself where I can take the bus and I can even start a conversation like that's important because if you don't push yourself to do that you'll never do that and I think that's what's important with self-love is being able to be comfort comfortable in the change and pushing yourself to be uncomfortable because if you don't become uncomfortable with trying to learn how to love yourself then I don't feel it's enough growth or you're getting there because then you're just comfortable in what you already know. For sure. And you, you mentioned this a little bit after the first question, but why is it important to have such a strong sense of self-love before committing to any sort of relationship uh, with someone else? Right. right. See, there's so many different opinions on this question because some people feel, well, I can be in a relationship even though I don't love myself because that person can help me. Um, And for me, I'm the type of person that if I'm not confident in who I am before starting something, then I know it's not going to work out because if I still have my struggles and not saying you can't be in a relationship without loving yourself, but I definitely think it's important because at the end of the day, you're two separate human beings. Yes, you are in a relationship together, but that person you're with still loves themselves and is still focusing on their things that they need to do in order to be a good person at the end of the day. And so I think that in order to be in a relationship and love yourself, I think it comes with balance. Um, And again, relationships sometimes need space. So if, you know, that space means you go and take a bath and journal for 20 minutes, Mm -hmm. or you go and talk to your mom on the phone and just talk about your day, I think that's super important. Um, And yeah, just being able to divide the two up in a relationship and with yourself because you are important and you come first, even in a relationship. Um, because at the end of the day, like, you know what you need and you know what needs are important. And so I just think, um, yeah, taking time to focus on yourself and being able to divide the relationship and say, I'm important too, I think is super um, important. I find a lot of people get caught up in the relationship and then sometimes they break up if it doesn't work out and they don't know who they are just because they've been so focused on building it with this person. So Mm -hmm. I think if you're able to take um, the space to be and say, okay, I'm a person, I am in a relationship, but I also need to take care of myself. So like I said, doing the things that you need to do, journaling, going for a shower, going for a walk, I think that's super important. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think there is two different um, kind of ways to look at it. You can have relationships in your life that are people that do help you find that love. I think friends and family are people that we can lean on, you know, to Mm -hmm. to help work on ourselves. But what, like also what you said, going into a romantic relationship or a partnership with somebody, I think that you're right. That self-love has to be there. It's true. And I think think what the struggle is too, is at the end of the day, we all want to be loved. We all want to have that person. And so I think if we rush that and don't take the time to focus on ourselves, then like I said, we get caught up, get caught up in the relationship and that's where you tend to lose yourself. And I think that's most important. So if that even means like asking your partner, Hey, could we paint because it makes me feel good that's a start because then you're giving yourself something that makes you feel good, but you're also inviting the person that you love in that relationship to do it with you. So, yeah, I think that's super important is having a a partner that's encouraging to be able to teach you how to love yourself as well. Um, Because if you have someone that doesn't really care about you as a person, aside from the relationship, then I definitely feel like self-love isn't where you're going to find it. Um, But yeah. (laughs) So transitioning from, sort of that self-love into the conversation on relationships, you know, from your experience or just in your opinion, what, what are some important qualities that a person should show when they're in a healthy relationship? I think um, some healthy qualities in a relationship um, would be definitely communication. I feel like that's a big one. If you can't communicate with your partner in a healthy way to be like, Hey, this hurt me today. Or, you know what, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed with everything. Would you mind helping me with this? I think that communication is definitely the start. If you can't communicate in a healthy way, then 
unfortunately self-love isn't going to be a part of that relationship. Um, I definitely think too is space. Like I said, you need, are two separate people and you know, you go to work, you go to see your family or you go to the grocery store. Like those are things that are important because you were a person before the relationship. So you also need to be a person during the relationship. Yeah. Um, I think too, encouragement is another healthy one. Um, being able to encourage your partner and say, Hey, like you did so good today. Um, taking that space to be able to go for a bath or go for a walk. You know what I mean? I think that's super important because at the end of the day, if your partner isn't encouraging, you're not going to be able to build yourself up in that self love because you're just going to want to be negative, you know? And I think that's super important. Right now in your life, what are, what are some important relationships that you have right now? Um, for me right now, I would say my relationship with my mom, um, that is definitely a big one. Um, it hasn't always been the best. It's been rocky for sure. I can admit that. Um, but right now we are both in a good place that we're both self-loving and, you know, we're all, we're able to say, you know what, like I need space in order to come back to this and be able to have a relationship with you. Um, for example, the other day we had spent the weekend together and it was just a little bit too much time and we got into an argument. And so not that family doesn't argue, it's, it's totally normal, but I think that's super important to be able to acknowledge, okay, we've spent too much time together. I need to make sure that this is a healthy balance. So we were able to take space, you know, realize some of the things that we said, apologize and, you know, be able to move on. I think that's super important with uh, a relationship like that, especially with someone else. Um, so yeah, I definitely value that with my mom and we see each other almost every Sunday. We go to church together, you know, we're volunteering for youth groups together. And I think that's super important. She's helping me move, which is like crazy. I didn't think that would even be possible, but yeah, I think that it definitely takes time. Um, no relationship is easy. That's for sure. Um, I would say for sure. Some of the other relationships I find important are with friends. Um, nobody likes to be alone. And so friends are definitely super important. I think too, like being encouraging and being there for a friend is super important because you're definitely going to want that same energy back. So I think friends can be super important. And I think like the most important relationship would be yourself. And I know that's the whole topic of this conversation would be yourself, because if you don't put yourself first, like, how are you supposed to do anything? Because, you know, yeah, like if you don't put like if you don't put yourself first, you can't start that journey of self-love and be able to love other people and love your mom or love your friends if you don't love yourself. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's really cool knowing you and knowing, mm-hmm. you know, a bit about your story and your relationship yeah. with your mom that you guys are at a place now where you can realize that your individual growth mm-hmm. has contributed to probably bringing you guys closer together. Yes, for sure. For sure. And I think like the most important step when it comes to relationships and things like that, romantic or whether it's with family, is being able to be mature enough to take that step back and say, okay, this isn't working or we're not getting along. How can I fix that? So if that means taking the space necessary and, you know, if that means just texting each other, you know, here and there during the week, how's your, how's your day? You know, I think that's super important. And yeah, because at the end of the day, if you're not able to look back and say, okay, this relationship isn't super healthy, I think it could become a little self-sabotaging because then you don't give yourself the room to be able to grow and find positive aspects to bring back into the relationship. And you'll just want to see the negative and go, oh, well, they said this, or, oh, they did this that one time. And so I think that's super important is, again, finding that balance of, okay, I forgive them. And this is how we can move forward to build this relationship. So... Yeah, and I think it's it's really good. Again, me and my mom have been able to acknowledge that we both have needed space. We've both grown a lot. And I think we're both at a point now where we're more friends kind of thing and we can encourage each other. Um, and so that's super important is I think definitely encouragement, especially from your mom. It's super great <laughs> hearing your mom proud of you and being like, hey, like you did such a great job or you know, you've been doing this really well. I'm super proud of you. It feels good. And so And even being able to say the same thing back to my mom, you know, hey, I love you. Like, thanks for helping me with groceries the other day. I think that's super important because at one point we weren't even able to say those things to each other. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah. And I think that a huge part of caring for someone else and being in any form of relationship is actually self-awareness too, right? Mm -hmm. That same topic of self-care, self-love is self-awareness. And 
right. like you said, knowing if you're in the right place to be there for that other person. Right. Right. <clears throat> it's for sure true. I think that, um, if you don't take the time for yourself and you don't have that self-awareness to see that your relationships aren't exactly working out how you want them to, again, that leaves room for things to fail. And necessarily we don't want things to fail. We still want those people in our lives, even if it means just being friends or even if it means taking that space. I think that's super important too, because at the end of the day, like you're only in control of yourself. And so if that means self-love, self-awareness, self-control, like those are things that you are only um, able to focus on and control. So, yeah. Cool. So thinking back in your life, um, have you, have you been in a, a bad or a toxic relationship that, that impacted you or, you know, had a, had a, an impact on your life and how you view relationships or how mm. you look at self-love and what did that look like? Um, I've definitely been in a few toxic relationships. I can definitely um, attest to that one. Um, I would say one of the times I was in a relationship, I definitely didn't love myself and was looking more for that outward love. And so it worked out at the beginning. It was kind of healthy as every relationship starts, you know, the honeymoon phase, you like each other, you take each other out, things like that. Um, and then further into the relationship, I started realizing that there was no encouragement and that it started becoming like a very negative relationship. He would say, oh, well, you did this and oh, you said this. And then you'd be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't even know I said it that way. And they'd be like, well, you're so stupid. You should have known this already. And you're like, oh, and then you start to think, oh, maybe I am stupid or maybe I just shouldn't say that because I don't want to upset them. So I just won't say it. Or I'm feeling this way, but you know what? I don't want to bother them with it. So I'm just going to keep it to myself. I think that's where I started realizing things were getting toxic because at the end of the day, a relationship isn't supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be building each other up and saying like, hey, I love you. Or, you know, hey, you did this really well today. Or thanks for helping me with this. And so, yeah, I just think that it became very negative very fast. And instead of focusing and being like, hey, why is it so negative? I just kept thinking of ways that I could fix it. And so if that meant, you know, not loving myself so much that day, or if that meant, you know, not going out with my friends, so that way he wouldn't be upset, I would do those things. And so that's where I think self-awareness comes into play, because you eventually the rose-colored glasses have to come off. That person isn't always the greatest they seem to be every time. And so, um, yeah, having that self-awareness and being able to take off those rose-colored glasses and being like, hey, they're not building me up or, Hey, I don't feel good after hanging out with this person thing. I think that's where the light bulb turns on and you go, Oh, okay. This relationship isn't for me. And so, yeah, I think just focusing on the signs of like communication, if health, if that's healthy, um, you know, the space is healthy when you guys are together that you trust that person, you don't have thoughts worried in your mind and, or when you are together that you're able to bring things up that have happened or things that you feel without being scared of that person reacting in a negative way, because, again, you can only control how you act and how you react. So, yeah. Like what, what advice would you give to a young person in high school or middle school right now, who's maybe struggling with self-love and how to cope with a difficult relationship, like maybe one that you mentioned? Right. Um, at the end of the day, like we just said, nobody has mastered self-love. You know, it takes day by day for sure. Even old, old people are still learning self-love. You know what I mean? And so I would say my advice would just be take one day at a time because that's all you're in control of. Um, tomorrow is never promised. And if we don't focus on the today, then we're only worrying about the tomorrow. And so I would say like, if that means, you know, taking 15 minutes out of your day to be able to be like, hey, what things make me feel good? Or writing some things down that you're grateful for, or being able to be like, hey, what are three things that I like about myself? And again, it's not easy. And those questions you're not going to want to ask yourself because you're like, what's the point? But if you slowly start doing those every day, then you the answers get easier. You'll be able to come up with three answers, no problem. Like, oh, I love my eyes or, oh, I love my personality or, you know what I mean? Those things will get easier. And eventually you'll be able to do five things that you like about yourself. And so I think definitely challenging yourself and pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone um, is super important. And again, like writing encouraging notes, if you have to put them in your locker or on in the back of your phone case or in a book, so that way when you open it, you can read those things. It's definitely important. And yeah, I would just say 
um, listen to what your heart wants, because at the end of the day, if you're not happy, then you need to fix that. And so I would just say, again, taking it day by day and focusing on what things you can control, whether that's, like I said, journaling or eating your favorite food or going for a walk, those are only things you are in control of. And the more you worry about other things like, oh, what do they think about me? Oh, what should I do tomorrow? Then you're going to get swept up in it and we're going to be 80 years old and not know how to love ourselves. So yeah, I would just say, again, taking it day by day for sure is super important. Yeah. And I think you're right. It's not, it's not about the big gestures or the big right. thing. It's, it actually is the little acts of self-kindness and self-love, yeah. um, the little reminders, the little notes. Right. The, the small activities of things that you enjoy um, right. taking those 15 minutes, right? Yeah. As opposed to something bigger. These are little things that you can control. Right. And they end up, they end up piling up to be something bigger and something beautiful. And I think too, elementary school and high school are some of the craziest years of your life and so much can happen. If I could look back at myself in high school and now I would be shocked. I wouldn't even recognize myself. And I think that's what's great about learning how to self-love and self-awareness is being able to look back and being like, wow, like I've grown so much from that. I now go for showers just because I want to, not because I'm forcing myself to have a shower or I like going for walks and not having to force myself for going for a walk. Like I take 15 minute walks rather than a five minute walk. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, I definitely think that it's important is just being able to focus on the little things and being like, I like to read. So I'm going to read for 10 minutes a day, or, you know, it makes me feel good when I dye my hair a different color, like doing those things, I think is definitely super important and finding a healthy medium with other people in your life that can also encourage you and also help you to self-love yourself. Um, like I said, whether it's a parent or a friend, I think that's super important is surrounding yourself with good people who will be able to help you become aware to be able to love yourself is super yeah. important. And you eventually, you see the growth, right? You see yeah. it over time, which you is, do. you for sure do, which is super great. And it's, like I said, even within the last two years, so much can happen and so much can change. And you're like, holy cow. And so I think one of the questions I ask myself when it comes to self-love and reflecting is let's say, you know, two days from now, I, I am fast forwarding my movie, we'll say if our lives are movies, and I'm fast forwarding it two days. And you could look at it that two days ago, I was sitting and being negative and crying, or two days ago, I was out going for a walk and hanging out with friends. I think that's where you can also look at it. And just think like, life can kind of be a movie. And where do you want to see your movie? Do you want to watch this horrible, scary movie that you know, you're not going to want to watch? Or are you going to want to watch this movie where you're loving yourself? You know, you're taking that time, you know, day by day to focus on the little things. I think that's super important. Um, and yeah, my my uh, pastor said it the other day, for sure, is your life is a movie. And if you were to fast forward your movie, what would you want to see? What would you want it to look like? And if so, that means taking those 15 minutes to write the little encouragement notes and putting them around your room or reading that book that you like, then that's super important. I think the, you know, so the last question I want to ask you before we finish today is um, how, how have the people in your life and the relationships shaped you as a person? I would say that that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I would say, again, it takes a lot of self-control and self-love from the beginning with yourself. Um, because if you don't, accept those healthy relationships and that healthy growth and that healthy change that they're trying to encourage, then it's not going to work and you're going to not see that growth. And so I think to, again, surrounding yourself with those good people is super important. You know, high school me surrounded myself with not so great friends and I'm able to look back and be like, wow, I wasn't in a good friend and those friends weren't super great, but now I can look and be like, wow, the friends that I do have now are super great and super encouraging and super loving. And so, yeah, I would just say that focus on when you're in that relationship or you're in that friendship, how do you feel after leaving it? You know what I mean? Like, do you feel good? Do you feel anxious? Like, I think those are definitely things to look for when you're um, building a relationship with someone is the after feelings, after being around them is what does that feel like? And so, yeah, I just started surrounding myself with people that made me feel good after hanging out with them and being around them. And so, you know, 
with my mom too, that meant taking space and being able to say, you know what, we've spent too much time together. I need to focus on how I said these things to you and how I need to say them next time. And so, yeah, I think that's super important. And again, I was not a very self-loving person as a teen and I wanted to just hate the world and, you know, just be negative. And so I think once I was able to flip that switch and be like, no, I want more for myself and I want to love myself because at the end of the day it's your life and you're in control I think that that's where I was able to open my heart and be like okay mom you're being very healthy bring you back into my life or hey so so and so like you're being kind to me I'm going to let you back into my life and so that's where you're able to reflect bounce back off of those people whether it's encouraging them or allowing them to encourage you back is I definitely think is super important and it has completely just changed me into being more of a um, healthy person and loving myself and loving those around me and just taking day by day. I think that has definitely shaped me as a person because I used to just worry about tomorrow and what could I do next and why does this make me feel like this? And now I'm like, oh, no, today was a good day. These three things were great about today. These three things I love about myself, I think, has definitely shaped me because it's so easy to want to be negative and it's so easy to want to be angry and hold on to those things. But again, if we push ourselves through that change and that discomfort and being like, yeah, they said something kind of mean, you know what, I forgive them because maybe they weren't having a great day. And then you're like able to switch and be like, oh, I'm still having a good day. I'm not letting this ruin my day. You know what I mean? I think that's definitely important. It has definitely shaped me today. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your heart. Yeah. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, you're welcome. For sure. It was nice talking with you.